Good afternoon everyone, in today's video we are going to be looking at whether will March be active with severe weather or not. We're looking long range at the latest European model run and this is, we're at the end of February. Uh, tomorrow is March 1st, so tomorrow is the start of storm season, which means there'll be new channel art. So make sure to stay tuned for tomorrow's video, you'll see the new channel art. It should be looking pretty good with this year's storm season. So. We're looking long range at the 500 millibar wind speed and we'll look at this typically to see whether we could see any severe setups possible in the near future. So let's look at March 1st and uh, March 1st we have a general jet stream going on uh, so that means there's not going to be very much uh, rapid weather changes which means it's going to be quiet. So uh, let's go on and move forward here uh, throughout March. We have a little bit of a dip in the mid-Atlantic. But uh, again, really not that much. But let's move forward here. Early March, we have a large dip in the jet stream, which means we have a potential uh, for some possible severe setups in early March. So let's move forward even more here. And as you can see, we have a stream of uh, even 100 knot winds over here in portions of Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri. Uh, we have a large area here of a potential severe weather threat for early March. And when you kind of see this kind of dip here, where it's dipping down from California going all the way up here, this is where you see the type of severe weather. Uh, and you get a lot of those winds. That's why typically we see those thunderstorms heading northeast a lot of the times in spring. Because we get these kinds of setups where the jet stream decides to uh, position either over kind of these areas uh, where those severe weather events are likely in spring. So let's move forward even more. And as you can see, that wind gets very strong, but it kind of breaks up, but it kind of moves and there's not much of a dip here. So as you can see, it's mainly just a line of wind, which could uh, possibly bring kind of a train of storms and flooding across the Ohio Valley region. And if those rain events with this type of jet stream, that's where you get kind of those flooding events in those types of Ohio Valley regions. So just kind of info on uh, jet streams and moisture and all of that stuff and how those affect these types of regions in the US. So far, we have one area to watch in early March and we have this jet stream setup that we're watching. Uh, especially for these types of areas uh, for uh, just after the first week of March. So definitely stay tuned for that. That is still a little bit uh, far out, but it is only around 200, 150 hours out. So it's not going to be too terribly far out. So it's something to f watch in the near future. Let's look at when this jet stream dips. Uh, and like I said, let's move forward. This is when uh, exactly when we see kind of that dip. So as you can see, we have a large low pressure system March March 6th or March 7th impacting portions of the Midwest and portions of the South here. And this is the SLP and precipitation. So this is mainly precipitation. This is now precipitation type. We're not seeing if there's any snowfall in these areas. This is just precipitation we're looking at because this is just the European model. Now, as you can see, these pinks here, this is meaning more heavier precipitation. These reds, again, more heavier precipitation, more stronger energy uh, in, the, in these types of precipitation. Uh, in these areas. So as you can see, we're seeing some very strong precipitation on March 6th to March 7th in those areas. Let's move forward even more. As you can see, we have a large area of potential strong area, strong energy in the atmosphere for uh, March 7th, March 6th through March 7th. So stay tuned for these areas. As you can see, let's move forward even more. And this heads throughout the southeast on March 7th. Likely not storms, at, not as stormy as these areas over here, but still definitely stormy. As you can see, we have, again, we have that jet stream going like this about now, which is bringing a train of storms just northeast, bringing, again, flooding. Uh, for these areas and you've seen guys seen a lot of flooding already uh, throughout this year so you're again going to see more flooding from this area uh, because of that jet stream it's going kind of like that so 
the storms are still going to be heading a little bit southeast, but it's going to be kind of a train of rainfall, which is going to lead to that flooding in those areas. So definitely stay tuned for March 6th and March 6th and March 7th throughout this week there's going to be more and more details on that for this upcoming weekend and uh, early week next week let's take a look at the gfs model the composite radar reflectivity so again this is going to be uh, still 150 hours out so this is going to change a bit here but let's head forward here this is march 6th the early afternoon hours as you can see we have some sort of storm system as you can see this could possibly even a severe storm system starting off early march we have a line of storms possibly bringing uh rainfall thunderstorms lightning and prob probably the main threat would be wind with this unless tornado ingredients decide to be there at that time let's move forward here as you can see a lot of those storms are mainly linear and clustered it looks looking like according to the gfs model it's not looking quite like a super cellular event yet but of course that couldn't that can change uh, within the next week and as we move forward here again this is simulated reflectivity it's not going to look like this on march 7th but it's going to look a little bit similar similar uh to this model as you can see we again have those lines of rain showers that's just uh going over these areas bringing some flooding due to that jet stream again we have a lot of rainfall just training over those areas and that's going to bring a lot of flooding uh, throughout next week and look at that it's just not stopping from monday all the way to wednesday we are seeing more rainfall yet again for those areas for thursday and friday so the next week is going to be uh, quite the flooding event in the southeast just because of that jet stream and all of that moisture that's being pulled up from the gulf that's just going to bring a lot of flooding uh, for these areas. So I think the Climate Prediction Center may bring out an outlook, a flooding outlook for that area later this week for next week. So stay tuned for that outlook. And I do think that might have a high, pretty high chance of for flooding in those areas because you have just multiple systems just training over there with rainfall across next week. Pretty much whole next week, a uh, whole midweek next week is going to be just rainfall for the southeast that's going to be a very definitely a cloudy and rainy week uh, for the southeast that's looking like now as we head uh throughout next late now as we head throughout the week after next week as you can see we have another possible system bringing some possibly storms to the southeast again and then let's move forward even more. It gets quiet around mid-March or so. As you can see, there's really not much strong systems in mid-March. Early March is definitely going to have a good kickoff uh, to storm season. However, we don't normally look at this, but I'm going to look at the CFS uh, version 2 model to get the farthest out. And this model is sometimes used uh, for long range, but it's so long range that it's not often used. So we're only going to go around possibly 300 hours out because we could even look into uh, April early april from this model it's so far out it goes to 800 hours out so that is extremely far out and it, we don't even know what's going to happen over 200 hours out so as you can see let's go ahead and move forward here uh let's look at mid-march so as you can see uh mid-march uh, this is super cell composite so not a super reliable thing to look at uh, but it just gives us an idea to if we could see any possible severe weather type setups throughout mid-march uh, and as you can see we have some possible setups mid-march uh, so far uh, throughout march 10th and march 15th it's looking quiet in the weather world as you can see let's go to uh, early march we have uh, again uh, this is not terribly far out this is only march 7th again we have that super solid composite going up into the orange and red which means we have a possible large scale severe weather event possible here uh, throughout the south and that even reaches up here into illinois missouri arkansas and those types of areas could see a possible severe weather event happening uh, march 6th and march 7th the rest of march however we have no clue about severe weather wise so we just kind of have an idea of whether march will, will be active active or not which here's your answer march i do think will be active severe weather wise mid-march may be a little quiet uh but 
we're going to head into late March and that's when things are really going to get active. And then we head into April. Uh, it's going to be extremely active. So if you otherwise maybe we have, might have another break or so in early May or so. Uh, but it's going to get active here. This year is going to be a very active severe weather season because we're going to have that La Nina in effect uh, throughout this spring, which is going to bring above average severe weather uh, to the U.S. Uh, if you did enjoy today's video, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new and turn on post notifications so you won't miss a single upload or live stream on the channel. But as always, stay safe.